The Earth, our magnificent planet, teems with a multitude of species, animals, fish, plants, whose existence effortlessly supports our needs. It's an endless, bountiful source of food. Or is it? Global population will grow by 2 billion people over the next two decades. There will be 8.3 billion people by 2030. We must produce more food to satisfy them. We don't know what conditions we'll face in the coming decades, but we know they're likely to be harsh. With climate change, the resulting rise in sea levels and changing weather patterns will put stress on food supplies. Genetic resources are the raw material we use to improve the quality and output of food production. To survive and cope with new conditions, we will need as much genetic diversity as possible. In fish, farm animals, fruit and other crops. The less diversity, the fewer the options future generations will have for confronting and resolving environmental changes and new human needs. We need a strategy. Over time, we've used thousands of species for food and agriculture. But today, only about 150 plant species are cultivated. 70% of our food now comes from just 12 plant and 5 animal species. For many major crops, production has become dramatically more vulnerable with the loss of diversity within species. Loss of animal genetic diversity is equally serious. 7,000 animal breeds are registered in a database of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. In the past 15 years, almost 200 of them became extinct. At least 60 breeds of cattle, goats, pigs, horses and poultry have been lost since 2002 alone. That's one a month on average. Many capture fisheries today are overexploited, but aquaculture is expanding rapidly and needs access to fish genetic resources. The lack of coherent policies for these resources is becoming a serious problem. Good management of forest genetic resources is going to be essential as we confront worldwide deforestation, encroaching deserts and the growing demand for trees as a source of energy, wood or animal fodder. With plants, animals and whole ecosystems at risk, essential natural processes are also threatened, like pollination by bees and the regeneration of the soil by microorganisms working underground. As the world's leading intergovernmental body working on hunger, FAO set up the Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture in 1983. The Commission works to halt the loss of genetic diversity, make greater use of that diversity in the struggle to feed the world, and ensure a fair and equitable sharing of the benefits when genetic diversity is tapped. By 2007, 168 countries were already Commission members. Since its inception, the Commission has negotiated and developed international agreements and codes of conduct to promote good management and availability of genetic resources. These include the landmark International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, 
which entered into force in June 2004. The Commission concentrated at first on plant genetic diversity. But in the mid-1990s, member countries expanded the responsibility of the Commission to cover all aspects of biodiversity for food and agriculture. Why? Because the overall goal is a global food system that works. A system that is nutritionally diverse. A system that is sustainable for future generations. This is a goal that can only be achieved by using all the components of biodiversity for food and agriculture. In June 2007, the Commission launched a visionary strategy for managing Earth's food biodiversity coherently. Under this rolling multi-year program of work, the Commission will consolidate management plans for plant and animal diversity, undertake the first ever global assessments of forest genetic and fisheries resources, and improve our understanding of the role of microorganisms in food production. Strengthen FAO's Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries to better use aquatic genetic diversity. Promote an ecosystem approach to managing genetic resources. Develop information systems to monitor trends, changes and threats to genetic diversity. Negotiate new policies to conserve our food genetic resources and share the benefits fairly. The Commission's comprehensive strategy for conserving and increasing access to genetic resources should benefit everyone, especially farmers in the developing world. Researchers in both the public and private sectors will have access to a wide range of genetic diversity. In the long run, fewer people will suffer chronic hunger more variety and better quality foods will be available at the market. Food will be produced more sustainably. And future generations will have the resources to face the unknown. This strategy now is an investment for the future. <laughs>